Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Uh, so we're going to be, we are all here in the Gen AI, is that right? Everybody is building yourself and 10 other agents. So we're going to be talking about that, and I'll uh, hand it over to Anish. Uh, my name is Mohamed Zaman. I go by Mo. I uh, lead the AWS uh, Strategic Partnership for Cybage. And with me, Anish, he leads our cloud data and AI practice at Cybage, and we're going to be building some stuff, and you get to know it. And also, after this, if you have more questions, come to booth 1231. Thank you so much. Oh. I'll use the handle, maybe. Hello? Hey, OK. I will use this. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, we're going to talk quickly about production-grade AI workloads, uh, the first and only AI session at reInvent. That's a lie, but we'll cover some interesting things here. So, you know, the, there are key ways that different organizations, both software companies and enterprises, are thinking about AI in their stack, right? You think about a typical three-tier stack. Either we have some people working on their data layer to get it prepared to sell to foundation model providers, right? So this is a lot of, like, publications, media houses are working on sending their data to model providers in a more effective manner. You have people who are working on, obviously, AI-assisted development and code. Um, and it's also changing the way you view an application stack, right? In the sense that previously you had APIs which are doing the most heavy lifting of business logic in an application. Now APIs are getting much thinner, right? Can you have AI agents that work on top of lighter weight APIs that are largely doing CRUD operations where agents can take on more of that workload, more of that logic, more of that orchestration, more of what the platform and the meat of the platform really is, right? And this is uh, being seen across the board, and we'll talk a little bit about how, what this means in terms of actual, real production-grade architectures. Uh, AWS services have evolved immensely alongside this journey, right? So back in the day, you, you know, it started with Bedrock, foundation models on Bedrock. Now we have a whole host of services. We have Agent Core, which gives you real-time runtime with agents as well. Um, so people are adapting, and AWS is providing the end-to-end -end services for all of those different workloads, right? Um, we'll jump into a few quick examples of, uh, you know, real production-grade implementations that we're working on at Cybage, and hopefully you can go away with some tips, ideas as well. Um, so one l massive and recurring issue that comes up is the ability to separate what is a prototype or a proof of concept within AI development versus what is the production grade uh, effort, implementation, architecture. We think about this a lot in Cybage. Um, and what the main takeaway from this slide is don't over-engineer prototypes in the space of Gen AI, right? AWS has great low-code services. We have bedrock knowledge bases. We have Kendra. We have a bunch of services which are meant for you to prove a concept, and it ends at that. You're not meant to take those implementations and take them to production. So what we usually design is a team that works on design and experimentation in an enterprise, right? They are only focusing on sandbox AWS environments, on using low-code services, and proving a concept for different use cases. Then you have a higher complexity data ingestion workflow, right? All your AI use cases in the enterprise need real-time data connectors ingestion uh, some, sometimes this has to be custom built from ground up. And then you have your agents that work from that data, at least in typical RAG applications as well as in agentic applications. Um, where with agent core now you can have, uh, you know, agents that work across different MCP servers. So one really useful aspect, and we try to implement that in our designs, are uh, differentiating between MCP servers or tools and then the agents to use those servers. Right, the same MCP server, for example, in this case, web browsing um, or context retrieval, can be utilized by multiple agents. Right, so this separation of tools with agentic workflows is something that we really, really focus on in in our designs and in our uh, you know applications. Uh, AI gateways are really picking up as well. Right, so there are tools like Light LLM. AWS also has many offerings here. Um, having a centralized place to log monitor and observe your workloads is becoming extremely essential, right? And the way to do that is through observability tooling, right? So AWS now allows you to ingest your Gen AI logs in CloudWatch, which lets you do end-to-end -end traceability of sessions, of traces. And observability has 
massive importance here, right? You need to know whether the workloads you're running and they're facing issues, are they happening at the stage of retrieval? Are they happening at the stage of generation? Are they happening because users are still figuring out how to use your platform? And observability helps you separate that as well, right? So this last layer here in terms of uh, light LLM and orchestration and observability becomes extremely essential. Um, so just the takeaway here is don't over-engineer POCs. They're meant to prove a concept. Once you've proved that, think about production-grade workloads on AWS and what that means. In some other cases, um, you know, a large, uh, one of our largest implementations recently was focused on building AI layers on top of legacy APIs and legacy software products, right? A lot of us here, even every booth that you see, we ship software. That's our bread and butter. It's about can I ingrain and can I infuse agentic layers on top of those product APIs? But in that process, multiple challenges do come up. Right? APIs that we've currently built and host in the world are not made for agentic consumption. They are made for consumption by typical user interfaces. Right? Um, and this can cause multiple issues. I'll give you a simple example. Um, a lot of product APIs return 100 plus results in their responses. Very noisy responses. Uh, a lot of garbage and JSON responses coming from those APIs. Neither would an agentic solution ever want to use an API like that. Because the way you interact with an agent is probably chat-based, right? which means that you're sending smaller workloads and smaller results to that chat. Nor would an agent successfully be able to reason through that massive API response. right? So API readiness is something that is extremely essential before you build agentic workloads on top of it. Another example, right? APIs often have dependencies. So we, we built this application, which did um, agentic orchestration on legacy APIs. And one issue we faced was latency. Uh, many people are currently struggling with it, right? Um, our LLM would hop and would do two consecutive trips to first get authentication tokens, to first call APIs, and then with the results of that, call downstream APIs. Again, these APIs have not been built for agentic consumption. If you know how users are going to interact with your agents, what type of workflows are they going to run? What type of prompts are they going to run? You can better design your APIs with an agentic first mindset. Uh, that has nothing to do with LLMs. That has nothing to do with generation. That is about logical design in your uh, API schemas. right? So that's something that we focus a lot on in Sybage as well. Um, out here as well, observability and monitoring become extremely essential. Uh, the good part about tool calling and function calling is that observability is more deterministic. Uh, what do I mean by that? With open-ended chat responses, you have to create evaluation matrices that are subjective, uh, you know, that are not completely accurate. With tool calling and agent calling and API calling, you can have more deterministic evaluation metrics. So I, if I build an agent that sits on top of my APIs, I can get to accuracy scores about how successfully it's able to call the APIs I needed to call for a certain set of prompts. That determinism uh, is super useful in evaluation, uh, which you can't get in basic chat. You can't get in just free form chat. For that, you have to use custom evaluation metrics. right? So, um, so evaluation, again, I'll focus on. And it's something that we work on a lot at Cybage. It's something that we infuse in a lot of our agentic development as well. So. Um, Moving to you know, some of the real production grade issues that people are currently facing. right? And we'll talk about each one. We'll talk about how those are being solved as well. One massive issue, and I'll start in the third box, actually, security and governance. right? The moment you introduce tools to an agentic implementation, the security concerns, you know, they, they, they multiply by magnitudes. Right? You have your CISOs getting extremely concerned with context mixing between different tools that have different permission levels. And the other part there is that people are extremely apprehensive, obviously, and rightfully so, of sending PII for LLM model calls. Right? How do you screen out? How do you put guardrails both at inputs and output stages? So that's something that we focus a lot on. Right? You can use services like Macy in AWS for PII detection and PII masking. You can use guardrails. You know, there are some open source frameworks. You can use custom guardrails to rail your applications, both pre-generation and post-generation. Uh, and you can 
bind user groups to the right tools that they have access to. Right? This is an extremely essential part of building these applications is that we need to reflect enterprise access permission levels with agentic permissions. Right? If you're building an application for internal users or for your end, end customer users, each of them have tiered permissions. Those need to be reflected with the tools that they have access to. With agent core, this becomes extremely powerful because you can use dynamic tool binding. So agent core allows you to bind tools dynamically for a user. So you can build in that pipeline binding that respects permission levels of that user. right? So that's something that we focus a lot on in Cybage as well. So that's the security and governance side. I'll focus also a little bit on the adoption and monetization, uh, monetization side, you know, because we have some time again. It's not as technical, but um, token-based pricing is not working out very well for people trying to ship out products with AI. Right? What I mean by that is if I'm a software company and I'm, uh, a lot of us are representing software companies and I push out a feature that uses LLMs at the back end, people are not willing to spend on token-based pricing for those end features. Right? Uh, people are trying to bake that into subscription pricing. Either you have a new tier of subscription that you know, demands higher AI workloads. But there are innovative ways that we've seen some of our clients work on that pricing mechanism. Right? So imagine you've built a, an agent that runs a certain defined workload. Maybe it runs a certain content generation workload, a report generation workload. Maybe it runs a certain uh, action, an actionable output, a research report. Try to price AI-based features on output and not tokens. Right? That's something that we're seeing a lot of in different companies is that the only way to get adoption from your end users is to price f these features based off end outputs instead of on tokens. So that's another interesting feature that we've learned. And for that, your API and AI gateway layers become important. Right? What I mentioned earlier around platforms like Light LLM, integrating CloudWatch and AWS. These aspects are required before you differentially throttle AI workloads between different user groups. Right? If I've decided to price an AI feature differentially by user groups, I need to make sure that I'm throttling the right groups by their AI usage. Right? So that gateway layer that gates your calls for agentic layers with end LLMs becomes extremely essential as well. Um, so these are some real production grade issues and solutions that we're working on in Cybage. Uh, you know, if there are any any questions, any further topics, you can find us at booth one two three one. We're building with AWS these production grade solutions. We'd love to get more into the details, um, and that is uh, you know all from us today. So thank you so much for coming. Hopefully, you're leaving with some tangible learnings and excited to talk to you all further. Thank you.